Hello everyone, I am Karthik and in this video we are going to create this Houdini project that you can see on your screen. So let's get started. So as you can see in the preview that uh, the cloth initially is really flowing and then suddenly some of the geometry uh, goes down and then suddenly stops and it is forming a shape in the and, and you can see that it is forming a shape in the form of letter K, which also happens to be my initial. So this is what we are going to do and let's get started. Okay. So the first thing that you can do is create a geometry network. You can call it sim and you can name it or you can name it whatever you want or color it for whatever you want. Uh, I will start with a I'll start with a grid and I'll change the rows and columns to 2 by 2 and I'll keep the size to 10 by 10. After this, what I'm going to do is I'll use a, I'll use a remesh node. Um, so this remesh node will give us a lot of geometry for the, in the grid. Uh, you can see there are a lot more triangles here and a lot more points as these points. As in our VLM simulation, we are going to need a lot of points. I'll reduce the target size to even lower to something like 0 0.02 maybe 0 0.05 so as you can see we have a lot more points and a lot more triangles here so that is good 50,000 points that is good uh, we are going to be uh, giving this grid or cloth uh, texture and for that we will be needing a UV so I'm providing UVs here with the help of a UV project node and uh, let me turn on the textures here you can see that we have UVs I'll just rotate change the rotation to minus 90 instead of 90 and you can see we have our UVs here okay this is nice after this what I'm going to do is I'll create a I'll create a group node and I'll call this border pin. I'll change it to points and come to include by edges, turn it on and turn on the unshared edges. This way, what we can do is in our border pin, uh, border pin uh, group, which is of uh, type points, we are selecting all the points, all the points which are at the border of this grid. And we will be using them as pinpoints in our vellum simulation. Let's create a vellum cloth constant here to make this grid a cloth. Okay, so what this vellum cloth constant does is uh, it provides our grid with two important values, two important cloth properties as two important cloth properties which are the stretchability and the bendability or the foldability of cloth so the stretch section here controls uh, how stretchy how stretchable the cloth is going to be if the stiffness is very high then the cloth is not going to be very stretchy and if the stiffness is very low then the cloth will be very stretchy i want this cloth to be somewhat stretchy so i'll keep the uh, stretch stiffness at around 1 million this is going to be working fine and I'll also increase the rest length to 1.3 so that um, once the simulation starts we will have a lot more the distance between the points will be a lot more um, in the bend section in our cloth constant come to bend section and the bend stiffness the bend section controls how bendy or how foldable the cloth is going to be and uh, we want our cloth to be quite foldable so I'm keeping the bend stiffness to our default value so once again uh, just try to understand that uh, the vellum cloth constant provides two important properties to our grid here the stretchability how stretchable the cloth is going to be and uh, the bendability or foldability how foldable the cloth is going to be in our cloth constant another important thing that you need to do is come to pin to animation in the pin points we are going to choose our border pin all the pins that we um, chose in our group border pin here as you can see all these points we are applying as pin points in our cloth constraint so these points will not be taking participation in our vellum simulation they will 
uh, they will stick to their position they will retain their position and uh, that is that after the vellum assembly vellum cloth constant i am going to use a vellum solver so this is a vellum solver uh, in the in our vellum solver you can come to forces and change the gravity to zero okay so we do not have any forces here um, we are going to create our own custom forces so dive inside the vellum solver create a vellum force node or force node and in our pop force we can give it some custom value so what i want is i want this cloth to go up so let me just give it a value of 2 in the y direction in our force and maybe give some random value in x and z as well so 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 is working will work fine i guess let's also increase uh, the amplitude to a little larger value maybe 4.4.25 yeah 4.25 and also increase the swirl size to 1.25 and uh, let's change the pulse length to something very low uh, maybe 0 0.0 0 0.03 yeah 0 0.03 and uh, let's see how this is going to work how this is going to look when we run our simulation okay so as you can see this is how the cloth is behaving it is quite stretchy and the distance between the points has also increased as we have kept the rest length scale to 1.3 instead of 1 and the points the border points are pinned at their original position so this is it this is our vellum cloth and as you can see in the preview if we look at it again um, Initially, the cloth is moving freely, just like this. Initially, the cloth is moving freely, and then suddenly, some of the points, some of the geometry goes down, and then they stop at their position, and thus creating this shape, in the the shape of K. So, to create something like this, what I had done in that uh, previous example is that I have used dynamic pinpoints. I have used the concept of dynamic pinpoints. So, just like we have created pinpoints to, just like we have created this border pinpoints in our, in our practice right now, uh, I have created pinpoints in that example as well. But those pinpoints are dynamic. Uh, what I what I'm trying to say is that uh, those pinpoints are inactive initially, and as the simulation progress or as the animation progress, they are getting activated. Uh, through a switch that I have created and um, they are getting activated in our simulation so initially those pinpoints in this preview uh, they are inactive and as the simulation progress I am turning those points into active endpoints and thus they are forming thus they are moving down and then they are stopping at their position playing the role of pinpoints perfectly so to create something like that what I am going to do now is Let's first create another group just to create our pinpoints in the shape as a shape of in uh, just to create pinpoints in the shape of K. So I'm creating another group here and this group I'll call stitch. This group type is also going to be pinpoints and uh, I'll just connect a font node here. So this font node is um, being connected to the uh, bounding object here. Okay. So in the font, in the font node, I'm going to type K. Maybe I'll just turn the template here. So I have created K, and as you can see, um, I need to rotate this. So I'm rotating it to 90 degree, but this K shape is very small so i'll just turn the font size to 10.3 and now you can see that you can and now you can see that our k is big enough for this geometry for this cloth so let me just turn this on as you can see this k this font this k that we have 
created with the help of this font uh, the points here for the edges are not really properly placed so what i'm going to do is i'll use a resample node and with the help of free sample load, uh, all these points are arranged properly now. But I'll increase, I'll decrease the length to 0 0.01 to increase the number of points here. And that is that. After this, what I want is, I do not want the primitive here. I only want the points here, the edges. So I'm using a calm node. And as I apply calm node.